certain people that you come across in your lifetime that they do that, they have that special knack. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to my good friend, Ted Owens. Jack and Gerald Horsell Cotton, they used to do that when they wanted playing time. <laughs> <laughs> you said you were really happy that Ted Owens is here tonight. Well, believe me, at 84, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I belong to the nearly departed group. Uh, and speaking of nearly departed, us, my old high school teammate, Bill Cummins, who I love, he's been my uh, he's been my friend for a lifetime, and uh, he's in the book. Our our pictures of the book uh, on the old outdoor court where we used to play at, at his house. In fact, Bill, that's cost me a lot of book sales. <laughs> but uh, I'm so happy to to be here, President. So nice of you uh, to come tonight and honor the old Sullivan family here. Blumer was a, a guy that I idolized when he was a great coach at Southeastern. Thank you for being here. I wanted to start this book signing at a place that I love, a place that gave me my first opportunity. And I'm leaving here tonight and going on to um, to Hollis, my hometown, uh, where I grew up. And these years in Hollis and, and Lawton and so forth were where I established and able to develop the values that have been with me for my lifetime. And uh, uh, believe me, uh, and, I, and I'm telling the truth, next week is a big deal that uh, KU Bookstore is putting on. Then I go over to Sprint headquarters in Kansas City and all of that and, and a big hoopla. But you know what I was excited about was being here tonight and being in Hollis tomorrow. I started, uh, you know, when my mother and dad died, didn't know, you know, people back then were pretty private. And I didn't know as much about how dad and mother met, or courtship, or uh, things that happened in, in their lifetime. And so when I hit 80 years old, uh, we were up at the Grand Lake and with, with the family, and I thought, you know, while my wits are still about me, I better start to write this down. And so I started writing all this for my kids and their grandkids so that they would know not so much about me, but they would know a lot about my dad and mother, who during, who during the Great Depression and, and, and during the uh, uh, Dust Bowl days, they made the kind of sacrifice that made it possible for me to have an opportunity one day to go to college and uh, made me, uh, the opportunity for me to participate in sports. And uh, we didn't have anything. We were, uh, as Dad used to say, we were poorer than Job's turkey. He didn't know he said we're poorer than Job's turkey. Uh, but, uh, uh, but nobody had any, any money. And we were dependent on everybody in the family making a contribution. We were dependent on helping our neighbors. If, if our neighbor was sick, we quit plowing in our field and went over and helped our neighbors. That was the way people survived the depression. When those, that sand, we would see that sand coming, we call them northers, and we'd see those black clouds coming in from the north. And mother would say, helped me put up the plastic on the north windows to keep the sand out. And even when we did that, the linoleum would raise up off the floor. And 
her clean house would be all dirty again. Our cotton crop would be blown out. But you know what? They had an incredible faith, and it's a faith that I still have that they passed on to me and that I have today. Uh, a faith in our Creator and a faith that if you just keep bearing down and keep working and uh, <clears throat> keep your commitment going, and that you can succeed. So this book uh, is about growing up uh, in Hollis, in, in Harmon County. And my book, three chapters of it are about Cameron College and Cameron University. Uh, and that's how important that it is uh, to me. I kept writing and writing and, and uh, uh, one day I ran into a friend of mine at the NCAA tournament named Dr. Jim Krauss and Jim said, uh, Coach, how you doing uh, with your book? And uh, I said, well, I'm making a little headway, but every year I knew I was going to run into him and I thought I'd better pick it up a little bit. And so <laughs> he said, let me see your manuscript. So I showed it to him. He said, you need to get this published. And he talked to a publisher in Kansas City. And uh, he said, I like it. We, we'd like to do the book. And so that's how the book came about. I handed him a manuscript of 115,000 words. And the publisher said, we only want about 95,000 words. So when I get the manuscript back, after they'd cut a lot of it, it cut a lot of my really good stories. <laughs> in fact, if your name's not in the book, it was in the book. So I ended up, I ended up, and as I called a publisher, I was really kind of ticked. And I said, were my stories too long or were they just not any good? And he said, both. <laughs> so, I said, well, my next book I'm putting out is at the Hang Up 2, and all those stories are going to be in the, the, the Hang Up 2. Now you think, what in the world is at the Hang Up? Well, if you've never pulled cotton, you don't know what the Hang Up is. But when you get to the end of the cotton row and your cotton sack's full, you hang it on the scales, uh, on the tailgate of the, uh, uh, of the wagon. And then whatever it weighed in, you write it. Uh, on the, there is a sheet attached to the wagon. You write your weight down and then you total them up at the end of the day. So my three brothers and, 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 and this family from Waco, Texas would come up every year and help us with the harvest. We'd pull all day and dad would haul a cotton to the gym. So at the end of the day, dad, like any good coach, would try to motivate us for one more wagon road. And he would say, He'd get his sack out. Now, we've been working all day, our backs were killing us, our knees were killing us, and he'd get his sack out. Well, we weren't very bright, but we knew what he was doing, and we'd be a little bit annoyed. But our competitive instincts would kick in, and we'd try to beat old dad. So we'd be pulling and pulling, we'd be out ahead of him, and we'd holler, looks like we got you this time, dad. He says, not what you have now, boys, that matters, it's what you have to hang up. And that's what the book's about. That life will be full of joyous occasions. Life will be full of difficult times. But we should never lose sight of our goals and purposes. And so it's what you have at the hang up that counts. And when you get to be 84, that old hang up getting a little bit closer, it's so important to get so many things done. I, uh, time becomes your most important asset. That there's so much to get done and there's so little time to do it. And so the book's about my life, about life on the cotton farm, uh, a, a, a moving into town and playing football. As Bill knows, I was a great football player in, in my school. I never. One day during World War II came along, my two brothers were, well, one of my brothers had already gone in for service, and there was a knock on the door, and there's a big tall guy there, 
said, Homer and Annie, that's my dad and mother, said, Homer and Annie, I'm Joe Bailey Metcalf. I'm the, I'm the, the coach uh, at, uh, I'm junior high principal and coach at Hollis. And the, the war has taken two, so many of the boys from your little country school, Arnett, that there's not enough to field a team. And so we have arranged to have five acres of your land transferred into the Hollis district so that the boys can play uh, basketball and football. I mean, basketball and baseball. We were pretty good baseball and pretty good basketball players. He, I, I, we said, well, coach, we have a problem. We all have one car in a family, so we don't have no way to get to school. It's three miles into town. And he said, well, I'm going to give Fred, a, 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 he'll, he'll drive a bus in. So we had a bus, and we drove it straight into town. We picked up the Curry girls on the uh, way into town, and we went straight to school. Then in the afternoon, the janitor drove the Curry girls home, and we worked out for sports, and we had a ride home. And uh, so he said, uh, so that's taken care of. He said, what's your other problem? Well, he said, he said, one thing that we expect with the war, we don't have very many male athletes to play football. And we want the boys to play football. And we said, well, coach, that'd be fine, except we have two problems. We've never played football, and we've never seen a football game. <laughs> <laughs> so that was our next adventure. We go, we go into high school, and these guys, Bill and our, our good friends thought they'd pull some pranks on the country boys. So did you ever see hip pads? You strap a hip pad around and this protects your tailbone. Well, they told us that's to protect your private parts that you're supposed to have it facing this way. And we found it really hard to run. <laughs> we, we, Bill reminds me of this. We go to Lawton to play. We're playing Walton. I go down on a punt. I'm an end. I go down on a punt in an attempt to tackle a receiver. And it's, so we punt, and it's a short punt. And as I look up, the ball's coming over my shoulder. So I grab the ball, take off, sidestep the receiver, and I'm on my way for my first touchdown. I thought <laughs> <laughs> until the referee blew the whistle and started. Uh, and counting off the yardage, uh, penalty yardage. And I look over and the Lawton coach is falling over the bench. Hugh Johnson was his name. He was just falling over the bench. And I looked over at our coach and he didn't think it was quite as humorous. <laughs> so we go out to Plainview to play and we go out on the cattle truck. At, 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 during that time, if you had an A sticker, you as a regular passenger car, B sticker was for farmers and C sticker for, uh, for people in the trucking business. So we found a truck with a C sticker. We loaded on the back of that truck with a tarp over and some bales of hay. And we head out to Plainview, Texas to play my first football game. Well, we, we, we dress, well, I, I'm starting, that tells you. You know, how much trouble we were in. <laughs> so I'm playing defensive end, and the linebacker on my side was a guy named Square John. And let me tell you how Square John got his. He was, Square John was hit in the head one night, and, and the doctor came out to check on him and said, Where did it hit you? And he's right there on the corner of my head. <laughs> and so he, we called him Square John uh, after that. Square John said, I said, what I do? And he said, you knock down the interference, and I'll make the tackle. So I said, square jump, what's the interference? <laughs> and he said, it's the blockers in front of the runner. You knock the blockers down, and I'll make the tackle. Well, after I asked that question, he didn't seem like he had a lot of confidence in me. <laughs> and as the game went on, what he did vanished after that. But anyway, that was my beginning to play in football. But the interesting thing is we enjoyed a, a good career 
playing basketball together in the, in the state tournament a couple of times. But at, at the end of my senior year, I didn't know where I was going to go to school. And so our high school coach, Joe Bailey Metcalf, thought enough of me that when OU was down recruiting J.W. Cole and Leon Heath, two a great high school football player, our high school coach said, uh, Ted, I want you in that meeting with the OU coach, uh, coach Jenny. So I go into the meeting and he gives a good pitch about OU football and all of that. Bud Wilkinson was going to be the, the new head football coach and, and so forth. At the end of it, he said, well, do you have any questions? And coach Medcalf said, well, uh, Coach Jennings, we like what you had to say about OU. But he said, those three boys are inseparable and they want to go to school together. And uh, so Coach Jennings said, and he, and he said, and a and wants all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> if they did, they neglected to tell us. So, so anyway, he said, well, I'll tell you what, we'll give, we'll give uh, Heath and Cole full scholarships. We'll pay that one's boys books and tuition. And uh, we're getting two jobs. He's a student fireman for a place to live and, and uh, work at O.T. McCall Supermarket delivering groceries. That's back then he was delivering groceries for, for enough to make food. And I thought that's, I'd worked all my life, I thought that's a pretty good deal. So that's how I ended up having a chance to go to college because we had two terrific high school football players and a coach who thought enough of me and was concerned enough about me that he would go out of his way to try to be sure that I went to college. And one of the things I write about in the book is that no matter how hard you work, what kind of commitment you have, what kind of training you have, if you don't have someone along the way to help you, you're not going to make it. And we need every day to show our appreciation to those people who have helped us uh, to have the opportunities that, that we have. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurriedly get to how I ended up here at camp. After, after I'd finished playing basketball at, at Oklahoma University and I went to Korea, I came home, played in the old National Industrial Basketball League, finished my master's at OU and uh, was in a class with a fellow named Charlie Grady. And Charlie said, uh, he, he said, I'm the principal at Southeast High School, and, and I need a basketball coach. Are you interested? And I said, I sure am. So I took the job. And so I'm on my way to Hollis to pick up my clothes at, at my parents' house. I stopped here to, at, Fort, uh, at Fort Sill to see a, uh, an old friend of mine, Ron Blue, an old teammate of, of his. And Ron said, I just noticed in the paper, Harvey Pate took the, uh, the basketball coach at Cameron, took the Houston job. And, uh, and so, uh, are you interested in that job? And I said, I sure would be. I think I'll go out and see Lark Ron Montgomery. And uh, I met while I was in the Army at Fort Seal. So I stopped by to see him. And, and I said, Leroy, I understand you may have a job opening here. And he said, are you interested? And I said, yeah, I am. I said, tell me about it. He said, well, you be the head basketball coach. We want you to start a baseball program. We haven't had a baseball program in 27 years. We want you to be the head baseball coach, assistant football coach. You'll teach four classes of U.S. history and we'll pay you $4,200. <laughs> and I said, with that kind of money, there's no way I could turn that day. <laughs> <laughs> so, just by chance, I, if I hadn't stopped to see Ron Blue, and that's the way life is, you know. You could be the best prepared person in the world, but timing and knowing someone, or, and, and that's why I, I tell my kids, you get to know everybody you can, and you make a good impression on everyone it's one and then prepare yourself obviously if you're not prepared you're not going to do a very good job but it's knowing people it's timing 
and it's being prepared. And uh, and so it, that's what happened here, and that's how I ended up with four of the most wonderful years that a, that a person could have. I I inherited some terrible players. Jackie <laughs> <laughs> and Gerald and a little later, Whistle and Cotton. But through the brilliance of my coaching <laughs> career, <I'm just laughs> they, they were incredible and are incredible. And I, I want to tell you, I've, I've, had, I've coached a lot of people and uh, none of them stack up uh, with these guys. They, you, you are, you're special in my heart and, and, and always will be. But I, I just had a wonderful time here. We, we had some success. We made it to the national uh, semifinals three years in a row. And we uh, had the first undefeated team in 58 to ever go to the national tournament and ranked number one in the country. And we were packing that gym. And it was the place to, to go. And it was it, it was the big social event in, in, in Lawton. And uh, it, it was, I, I, it was incredible. And, and the people who surrounded the program, uh, we would have, uh, after games, you'd have some family would have everybody over and you'd, you'd take uh, potluck uh, suppers as we uh, called them back then and then when we'd go to Hutchinson they would all be be with us in fact unfortunately stayed on the same floor as we did uh, uh, and but it was it, being here was a, a family affair and uh, it was a great great time in, in, in our life and uh, I treasure it, and and as much as being a member of the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame and uh, the Kansas Sports Hall of Fame and, and those things, nothing means more to me than to have been honored here uh, with uh, the lectureship and then being in the first class that was inducted uh, in into the Cameron Hall of Fame. So I am uh, I am thrilled to, to be here. And uh, I thank you all for coming. And uh, uh, if you'll keep the limit on your books to 10 books, please. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, any, anybody have a question about anything? Any? Yeah. Yes. Did you mention anything about the how you won that championship in baseball? Well, that, that is a story that some people someday say will be a, a, a movie. I'll, I'll quickly, I, I won't keep you too long. We started a base, Leroy wanted to have a baseball team. He thought that, as Leroy always did, he was looking for football players. And he thought if we run into a football player who also wants to play baseball, we <clears throat> don't want to lose him. And so, so Leroy said, let's start a baseball program. So. We didn't have uniforms. We didn't have a field. We worked out on the military drill field. We didn't have uniforms, didn't have a budget, no scholarships. And uh, one day I had a friend named Jim Reinhardt who ran the recreation out at Fort Sill. He said, Ted, won't you bring your teams out in scrimmage out at Fort Sill? So we'd go out there just so we had a field and we would go out with no uniforms. And so that's all we did the first year. In the second year, we joined the Texas Conference. What was, what was your name? Pioneer. Pioneer Conference. They didn't have baseball. So there was a question whether the administration would <coughs> have baseball or not. But we had a bunch of guys who said, all coach, we have a pretty good team. Why don't we, have a, why don't we go ahead and have a baseball team? And so we started working out, and and uh, and in uh, a few weeks later, they came in and they said, "We just read that the Nash that they're going to have the first national championship ever in baseball at uh, Northeastern A and M in, in Miami, Miami, as they say." <laughs> and uh, 
they said, wonder how we can get in it. So I called, all we've done is place in Fort Seal team. So I called a regional director out of Amarillo and I, and I said, Dr. Carter, uh, we have a pretty good baseball team. How do we get in the national, how do we qualify for the national tournament? He said, well, what kind of team do you have? I said, we have lost our college team this year. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, I'll tell you what you do. So two days later, I get a telegram from him. He said, Cameron and Sarah Junior College will play two out of three. The winner of that will play the champion of the Oklahoma Conference, which was, uh, was Bacon. And so he said, and, and Cameron will host the tournament. I thought, we don't even have a field. We don't have uniforms. <laughs> so I search around town, and somebody tells me that their old Class D league had a baseball park. So uh, we go out and, and kind of cut the weeds and, and all of that so we have a place to play. And I went out, and the 5th Field Artillery Battalion coach told me, he said, Coach, we're getting new uniforms. We'll give you our old ones. So I took 5th Field Artillery Battalion. We stripped those letters off, and I had a lady embroidery Aggies. <laughs> if you look real close, it looked like the 5th Field Artillery Battalion Aggies. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, so we beat Sarah in first game. Then we beat him again. So now we're playing Bacon, two out of three, see who goes to the national championship. Well, we, we had the, Jackie was on that team. We had baseball, we had basketball players, football players, and, and some southwestern Oklahoma guys who were pretty good baseball players. And uh, so all of a sudden we beat Bacon, and now we're one game away from playing to go to the national championship. <laughs> We didn't have enough uniforms to go around. I didn't have a uniform. I wore a t-shirt. We had a camera across it. I didn't have a, even have a cap. And when, when we would come in to bat, I borrowed one of the substitutes, a cap, because I, called, uh, I coached first base. And we had uh, very sophisticated signals. <laughs> uh, your hand on the cap bill, remember, B, Bill, it's bunt. <laughs> and uh, skin on skin, S, steel. Okay, and that was it. <laughs> so, so, we beat Bay Cone two games. Now we're 4 0. We qualify for the national <coughs> championship. And I had to talk to the administration about getting a couple of station wagons so, so we can drive all the way across the state to, uh, to mine. So we picked up a game at, uh, at Midland, I mean at uh, uh, Wichita. Midwestern. Uh, Midwestern. 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 We played Midwestern, and they were five and oh. We go up and who do we draw? Of course, the best team in the nation. Phoenix, like they were 60 and three or something like that. We're five and oh. <laughs> <laughs> So our big basketball player, Homer Watkins, was pitching. He's 6'7", and he didn't see real well. And that 6'7", 235, I mean, he was built. And he would stare down, which any batter was a little bit shaky about getting him in because he was squinting as if he couldn't see. And so he starts off, he starts off pitching. And they knocked the ball. They must have hit 20 line drives. But by the grace of God, right straight at somebody. Jackie was playing in the outfield. He have been the starting catcher, but I didn't <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> But so, so we, we come down uh, uh, to the end play in Phoenix, and we go ahead of them. And uh, uh, and we bring in 
Tankers League. We have a, a backup quarterback. Jackie was a starting quarterback. The Tankers League was the backup. Great knuckleball pitcher when he's on. And if if the catch could catch him, he comes in. We win the game. Now we're in the semifinals, so I used up my two pitchers. All I had two pitchers. So our third baseman, Dexter Rollette, said he'd pitch some time in high school or something. <laughs> <laughs> he got it. And uh, so Dexter gets the side out in the first over, and uh, so we get him out in the first inning. We scored five runs on this the Texas champion. We scored five runs. We're ahead five nothing. And Dexter's pitching in the second inning. He walks the bases full. Then he walks in a run. Then he walks in another run. Then he walks in another run. <laughs> and, and I go out to the mound. I said, Dexter, I'm sorry. I've got to take you out. And he said, you can't take me out, Coach. i got a no-hitter goal. <laughs> <laughs> It was a pretty loose group. <laughs> well, anyway, so, so I bring Tankersley in. He's already pitched that day, earlier in the day, but he comes in. We get him out. We win the game five to three, and all of a sudden, this team with no uniforms, no scholarships, no field to practice on, uh, is in the national championship game. And we jump out, we get out ahead of them, and they fight back, and the game's very close. And then I made a brilliant move <laughs> at that time. Every time I would go here, almost in unison, the other team would say, Bunt. <laughs> I would go here, and they would say, Steal. So cleverly, I called the team together, and I said, it's pretty obvious they know our signal. I said, we're going to switch it. That's a steal now, and that's a bunt. So we get two runners on. We got two strikes on the batter, two-thirds. Our first baseman, Sid Griffin, is at the plate. And I want our runners to start with, with two strikes. I want our runners to start. So I'm going to give them, I'm going to give them the steal signal. Only I'd forgotten that that was the button signal. So I give the batter, I give the batter the steal signal, and Sid backs out of the plate. You know, I, he's got to be saying, no sane person would bunt with two strikes. So. He steps back in, and I was kind of ticked that he was questioning my coaching. So I give the signal again. He lays down a perfect bunt toward third base. Third baseman, like anyone would under circumstances, playing back. He comes in. Uh, the catcher has to go out and get it. Throws to first base, trying to get the runner. Throws it into right field. We score two runs. Win the national championship. <laughs> so the Baylor coach, who's trying to recruit Jackie, comes over. The baseball coach comes over and, to me, and he said, "Coach, that is most brilliant." Piece of <laughs> and I thought, no one in the no one in the stands knows I was the most surprised. <laughs> well, anyway, we had a uh, we had a marvelous run here, and uh, like I say, the the people here and and and, and uh, the people of Cameron and Herb, all of you guys are are always will be close to my heart, and I thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Coach. Uh, now we're going to uh, set the table up. Our Cameron Bookstore is running our sales table. Books are on sale. Coach will Coach will be situated back there, and he will be signing your books. And uh, I want to invite you all 
not only to buy a book, but also we have our Aggie Madness going on tonight. And that's over in the gym. That starts at 7 o'clock. It's free admission, uh, food, drink, a, a lot of prizes, a lot of door prizes, a lot of t-shirts being thrown. We introduce uh, both our basketball teams and we kick off the basketball season. I also have heard that uh, Coach and some of his players are going to be celebrity judges for the dunk contest. So uh, you don't want to miss that. No, it's not ironic. None of us could dunk the basketball. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, hey, thanks for coming out. I encourage you to support, support Coach Owens, and I appreciate your support of Cameron University.